Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the power of next generation programming with Deluge. Our agenda for today is to talk about what Deluge is, what variables and statements are, what data types are and what's available to us in Deluge, operators and conditionals, and functions. So what is Deluge? Well, Deluge stands for Data Enriched Language for the Universal Grid Environment. So what's so special about it? Well, Deluge helps you bridge the gap between data and business logic. It creates complex workflows very quickly, and it abstracts the complexities like scalability, security, caching, etc. It is available across the majority of Soho applications as custom functions, and it is very easy to learn. So let's talk about variables and statements. What is a variable? A variable is a virtual container of a specific data type. It is a storage location with a name that contains some sort of value. What is syntax? Programs execute commands sequentially, line by line. Therefore, a specific structure is required. Every programming language will have its own nuances, and this specific structure is called a syntax. Now let's go back to variables and talk about what variable declarations are. When creating a variable, it could be referred to as variable declaration. The correct syntax for variable declaration is as follows. It requires a variable name, an equal sign to assign a value to it, and then the value itself with a semicolon at the end. Every statement must end with a semicolon, which tells the programming language that the instruction for that statement terminates there. Now, there are rules for variable names. All variable names must begin with a letter or underscore. After the first letter, variable names can also contain letters and numbers. No spaces or special characters other than the underscore are allowed. Here are some examples of variable names. The ones on the left side are acceptable names. And the ones on the right are unacceptable. Here are some variable naming tips. Use simple descriptive variable names like amount or age. Consider creating names by using one word or by putting two or three words together, separated by an underscore. This is referred to as snake case. Don't use variable names that differ by only one or two characters. Differences between variables should be very easy to see, such as entry total and all total. Use similar names for variables that perform similar functions. Follow every variable declaration with a comment that defines it. Now let's talk about data types. These are some of the data types that are all available to us in Deluge. We have text or string, numbers or integers, decimal data types, Boolean data types, which are true and false. We have date variable types, time data types, date, time, and collections, which are an assortment of the above data types. Here's a table showing you some of the data types. Here's some examples of the data type string. It can hold anything as text like words, numbers, dates, URLs. It can also contain spaces and special characters. These string data types are always defined with double quotes, as shown in the example below. Here are some fields with string data types. Names, emails, address, phone, single line, and others. The next data type is a number data type. These can only hold whole numbers. It can hold positive or negative values, and number values are always defined as is. And number values are always defined as, as is. These are some fields with a number data type. Number, lookup, dropdown, radio, auto number, or formulas. Our next data type is a decimal data type. This decimal data type is an exact numeric data type used to denote fractional data. In technical terms, it is defined by its precision. Here's an example. The decimal digits required should be specified after the decimal point. This data type also supports negative values. Here are some examples. And these are some of the fields with decimal data type. Decimal, currency, 
percent of formula. Now another data type would be the Boolean data type. These data types can only have two values, true or false. These are based for all comparison in condition validations. Its default value is always false, cannot be used in a mathematical calculation, and its value is always notated in lowercase text without any quotes. Some fields with the Boolean data type are decision boxes and formulas. Now the data type date time supports various date formats. When time is not specified, it takes zeros as its default. Relational operators supported between two variables of type date time only, and date time values must be enclosed within single quotes. Now the data type collection can contain elements of different data types like number, text, date, etc. It can also be restricted to only accept values of a specific data type using special qualifiers. And it can be an order list or based on key value pairs. No operators and conditionals. What are operators? An operator is a symbol that tells the programming language to perform a specific function on the data. These play a major role in decision making. Here's a table with some arithmetic operators. We have the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus operators. Now here we have a table with relational operators. We have the lesser than, greater than, lesser than and equal to, greater than and equal to, equals and not equals operators. Now here we have a table with logical operators. We have the and, or, and not operators. And here we have the operator truth table with the operators of and, or, and not. Now let's talk about conditionals. These help the program to take a decision based on a specific criteria. If the criteria is met or true, a certain piece of code is executed. Conditionals have specific syntax for various statements. If statements. If a specific criteria is met, then a specific action is executed. The else if statement. This will check if a specific criteria is met, and if so, then a specific action will take place. If it doesn't, it moves on to the next else if statement and checks whether that criteria is met. If it is met, then the specific action is actually executed, and if not, it moves on. Now, the else statement follows the same sequence, first checks for a specific criteria. If it is not met, no action is taken, and if there is no other if conditional statements, then it defaults to the else statement, in which case should be at the end, and it would execute whatever conditional statements are within that block. Now let's talk about functions. A function typically takes an input, processes a specific set of instructions, and then outputs a specific result. What exactly are functions? Functions are a group of scripts that triggers a specific process. Deluge offers many pre-built functions, but you can also build your own. Functions are very helpful for reusability. If you have a specific sequence of code that needs to be used multiple times throughout your computer application, then a good practice would be to create a function and call it from whenever you need it. Now Deluge does provide some pre-built functions. Deluge gives us functions for text, which help us find and replace, count the values, add or remove or manipulate, text strings. It also gives us date and time functions will help us fetch day, week, hour, and month or calculate differences between date time. It also gives us functions for collections that helps us loop through a list, update details from one place to another, and it gives us functions for number, decimal, calculations. When it comes to these pre-built functions, we don't necessarily need to know how they work in the back. We just need to know what goes into them and what is supposed to come out of them. Learn how to use them and it will help you develop with Deluge. Here's a list of some of the pre-built functions that Deluge provides to us. All right, so a quick recap. We talked about what Deluge is, what variables and statements are, what data types are and which ones are available to us in Deluge. We talked about operators and conditionals like those if else statements, and we spoke about functions. Thank you very much. I hope this video was very educational.